Welcome back to this course on nanostructured materials, synthesis, properties, self assembly and applications. Uh, we have had uh, two lectures in module 1 and uh, today is the seventh lecture of module 2. Uh, in the previous uh, lectures, we discussed the synthesis uh, using uh, CVD techniques that is the chemical vapor deposition techniques, the physical vapor dep deposition techniques and uh, uh, MBE techniques which is molecular beam epitaxy techniques. Today we will start on the synthesis of nanostructured materials based on some template methods. Uh, the template based synthesis as the name uh, suggests is based on uh, some form of a material which will form the template and on which the nanostructured material will be made. Once it is made, the template will be removed and only the nanostructured material will remain. Now, uh, this is uh, schematically shown uh, in a scheme which all of you must have seen. Uh, you must have seen uh, pottery or Chinese pottery specifically, uh, where uh, the finished material is of clay or something, but how is this uh, shape taking place? You start with a template. This template in this case is made of wood or it can be made of a metal and then in this case, uh, we put the clay onto this piece of mud, uh, wood and the clay fills all the holes and all the uh, gaps within the uh, piece of wood. And then once you bake it uh, you and then you remove the piece of wood, what is left is this jar which is made only of the clay. So, this is precisely what you are going to do in a template method. You are going to use a template and put some material which is clay in this case. In our case, you, need, you may use any uh, nanoparticle, any other material which can be a liquid which will form a shape. The shape is being given by the template. This piece of wood here will be given by some other uh, template which will be in the form of small structures and which will ultimately when we remove that template you will get in this case you get a large structure you will get small structures which are dependent on the shape of the template. So, what can be these templates in the molecular regime in the nanostructural regime? You can use many templates. Uh, for example, you can use cation exchange resins which have micro pores that means uh, the size of the pores are uh, micro pores. You can use zeolites. Uh, all of you know zeolites are aluminosilicates. They have three dimensional structures. Uh, they may have uh, channels within them or different zeolites have different size of pores. So, depending on which zeolite you use, you can either make a small particle or you can make a columnar structure. You can also use silicate glasses as templates within which you can make uh, a material which will have in itself some features which are left from the silicate glasses. You can use uh, ion exchange technique. So, you have a template in which there is a particular ion uh, in the material and then you ion exchange with another ion and now you get a new material with the same structure as the initial template material. So, because only one ion or one set of ions have been exchanged in this methodology. You can also use gas deposition on a shadow mask. The shadow mask here will act as the template and then uh, this ordering of the gas molecules on this mask 
will give you the structure that you basically need and for that you have to design this shadow mask because according to that the gas uh, deposit will take place and the structure that you need will be formed. So, these are uh, different classes of templates. Uh, we discussed cation exchange resins where cations can be exchanged, zeolites, silicates and then other ion exchange uh, possibilities. So, there are different uh, types of pores, density of pores possible with different types of uh, template or different type of membrane which are going to act as templates. For example, if you have a polymer, uh, mainly polycarbonates are used for this purpose where you etch ion uh, tracks that means you use ions uh, and bombard these polymers and these ions leave tracks and these tracks are of the order of 5 to 500 nanometers. Uh, these uh, channels or ion tracks as we call and the density of these uh, pores are of the order of 10 to the power 11 per meter square and these are randomly arranged pores. You can also have a mica which is a natural naturally uh, occurring inorganic material, it is a mineral and this mica has layered structure and in this mica you can make this kind of etching to yield channels of 1 to 500 nanometer uh, size in which again you can have random pores of the order of 10 to the power 10 or 10 to the power 11 pores per meter square. Uh, you can also use alumina which is aluminum oxide Al2O3 and in this alumina you can make uh, channels of the type of 10 to 500 nanometers and which is the pore diameter and again you have 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the power 13 pores, but now in this case you can have ordered pores. So, earlier we were talking of random pores, but in the case of alumina uh, and as well as in the case of block copolymers, we can get ordered pores and higher density of ordered pores and the channel width will vary from 10 to 500 nanometers in the case of alumina and 10 to 20 nanometers in the case where you, you are using block copolymers. Uh, basically block copolymers have two types of polymers, one may be a hydrophobic, the other can be hydrophilic and they form a, a, a two, a two types of polymers joined together form a block copolymer. And there also you can create this kind of ion channels uh, of 10 to the power 10 to 20 nanometers thick which will yield you ordered pores in which you can do synthesis leading to uh, nanostructured materials which are precisely ordered because the pores in which you are doing the synthesis are precisely ordered. So, you can have random pores or you can have ordered pores and using these different types of membranes, we can yield random nanostructures or ordered nanostructures. So, these are various types of membranes uh, and templates which are used to grow nanowires within these pores. So, you can see you can generate from around 1 nanometer diameter to up till 500 nanometer diameter wires. Uh, and many, many wires you can generate of the order of 10 to the power 10 to 10 to the power 13 depending on which methodology you use uh, to grow these nano wires uh, in these templates. So, here you can see this is an example of a template mediated growth where you are trying to grow uh, carbon nanotubes on silicon nanowire tips. So, here the silicon nanowire uh, is the template on which you are trying to grow carbon nanotube. So, the carbon nanotubes are these thin uh, tubes 
which are growing out of these silicon nanowires. And so, the carbon nanotube is being guided by the silicon nanowire which has been formed earlier. This is a close up view where you can see this is the silicon which has a wider uh, or larger diameter and on top of that you have this carbon nanotube. Uh, the scale here is around 10 uh, nanometer. So, uh, half of this is around 5 nanometer. So, you can think of this is like 5 to 6, 5 to 7 nanometer thick carbon nanotube grown on around 15 nanometer thick uh, or 20 nanometer thick silicon nanowires. So, these are very useful techniques. The template uh, based techniques are very useful to prepare uh, nanowires which are precisely ordered in a particular fashion. To look at uh, these carbon nanotubes more carefully, here is a high resolution transmission electron microscope micrograph. So, you have to use an electron microscope uh, which has uh, working under a uh, voltage of around 200 to 300 kilo volts and you know accelerated electrons come and hit the sample which is loaded on a, a grid which is which may be a copper grid or something and the electrons then uh, make an image of the particles that they see. And depending on the voltage, the wavelength of the electron can be modulated and the wavelength of the electron uh, can be of the order of 0.05 or 0 0.02 angstroms and so you can see objects which are very, very small. And so here is a carbon nanotube and you can see the different layers of carbon uh, and this is a typical thickness between the walls of two carbon layers of around 3.4 angstrom or 0.34 nanometers. And in the this uh, slide, what you see is that you have this uh, silicon uh, nanowire and on the tip of the silicon nanowire, you have this carbon which is growing on top of the silicon nanowire. So, the silicon nanowire is acting as the template and on top of that, you have this carbon uh, rather than a nanotube here is like more spherical. And so, these spheres of carbon since there are several layers in each sphere, this is called a onion like structure. And so, these are called carbon nano onions. It is nano because you know they are of the order of few nanometers in diameter. So, uh, if this is 0.45 nanometers. So, around this whole thing may be around 10 nanometers or 8 nanometers. right? So, here we are seeing a silicon nanowire which uh, earlier we showed this is silicon nanowire where carbon nanotube is growing and here we are showing silicon nanowire as a template at the tip of that carbon onions are growing. Now, uh, you can have several other kinds of hosts. So, we discussed you can have 1D tunnel host like uh, zeolites which have tunnels like this or channels or you can have lipid bilayer vesicles or many other inorganic compounds which have tunnel structures. So, you have vacant spaces between the cylinders in which you can grow nanowires. You can also have hosts which are two dimensional in nature. And these are layered hosts, which can be made of materials, which are layered materials like molybdenum dioxide or LiNbO2 or lithium cobalt oxide. Uh, there can, these can be oxides, these can be halides or chalcogenide layers. For example, molybdenum disulfide, tungsten disulfide, molybdenum diselenide. These are all two dimensional layered materials. In between the layers, you can grow. Uh, your uh, material which you want to grow and this layered, the blue colored layers will then act as a template and after the reaction, you have to remove these templates to regain the material which are in between the layers. So, here uh, uh, you get you get one dimensional uh, linear structures when you make materials within the cylinders. Here you get two dimensional structures which when you make 
the synthesis using these 2D layered hosts and this is a 3D layered host. So, they, they form porous structures. So, there are pores inside. So, this is a 3D framework host and many materials have zeolites can have this kind of cylindrical pores. They can also have this kind of 3D pores which are of the order of 4 to 10 to 20 angstroms few nanometers and you can have many other polymers, buckyballs etcetera as 3D framework hosts where you can generate only particles and not layers and you cannot generate wires. Normally, you will generate particles when you use 3D hosts as templates for your synthesis. Whereas, here you will you can generate wires and in this case you can generate 2D layers using these particular hosts. This is another method where uh, you are using you are going to make metal nanostructures using a template based synthesis. So, you have say gold one metal here and aluminum another metal here and then you make many structures to separate uh, the layers which will form in between right and this uh, you fill with a copper solution right. So, there, there will be copper solution here which and in between you have membranes. So, what happens uh, depending on the redox potentials uh, the metal that you have chosen aluminum and uh, copper, copper will get reduced easily. So, it will accept electrons to form this copper so, uh, solution which may be copper nitrate solution or copper sulphate solution. It will you will have copper ions in this solution and it will readily take up electrons which are given by any metal. So, the metal which will give up electrons easily are the this aluminum metal and this aluminum metal when it gives out electrons it form aluminum ions and goes into solution and the electrons that it gives out that is actually coming in here reacting with the solution and copper 2 plus gets reduced to metallic copper and wherever it gets reduced it gets deposited. So, uh, this wherever uh, copper 2 ions are there they get reduced and they form copper metal layers in these cavities. So, now you have a particular order of copper metal which are separated from each other by this gap because no copper metal can uh, deposit here which are the membranes and only the gap which is available where the solution can go can be reduced to copper metal. So, you will have copper metal regularly spaced between this region and then again you will have copper here and again you will have copper here like that. So, you can arrange systematically using this template and here we call this the uh, anodized aluminum. So, aluminum is the anode and it is acting as an anode and so this aluminum metal template is also called the anodized aluminum metal template. Uh, which is used for doing the uh, uh, template based synthesis for metal nanostructures. And it is possible to uh, uh, make na uh, nanostructures of those metals which have a, a much more ease in accepting electrons uh, from aluminum. So, uh, they have a higher uh, reducing potential reduction potential compared to aluminum. Now, uh, what other metal materials can you make uh, using these uh, template based methods? Uh, you can make inorganic materials, you can make organic materials, inorganic materials like metals like just now we showed copper metal, uh, we can make uh, gold, silver we can make organic compounds, we can make polymers or metal organic compounds like you suppose you have to make a compound of palladium with some organic moiety which may be a pyridine based or uh, naphthalene based etcetera. So, you can make materials uh, of different kinds using the template based synthesis. 
you can these materials that you are uh, depositing using the help of a template they may have a wide ranging properties uh, some can be insulating some can be semiconductors or metals or even superconductors that is those in which the resistance below a certain temperature goes to zero such kind of materials are called superconductors and so you know you can deposit any kind of material if you choose the right conditions the right uh, template and the right reaction whether it is a reduction or some other reaction so you can make a wide variety of materials with different properties and the size of these can vary if you have channels that is one dimensional channels you can have diameters from 5 to around 10000 angstroms of these materials so you can have wires which are from 5 angstroms to around 10000 angstroms uh, so which is like uh, 0.5 nanometers to around 1000 nanometers or which is 1 micron so you can have uh, from 0.5 nanometers to 1 micron uh, sized linear uh, arrays of nanostructured materials using templates. If you want to make 2D structures within the interlamellar spaces, so uh, these are uh, the interlamellar space. So, between this one blue layer and another blue layer, this space is called the interlamellar space and your material that you will be synthesizing using this 2D template or this 2D host will be synthesized within these two dimensional layers. So, which are which is also called the interlamellar space. So, in the interlamellar space you can make layers which are of the order of 3 angstroms uh, wide or 3 angstroms long up till 50 angstroms wide and 50 angstroms long that uh, uh, so a very large like micron sized uh, uh, nanostructures are possible in channels, but normally in the interlamellar spaces or 2D structures it is difficult to make very large layers of uh, 2D structures. In the cavity diameters there is a 3D structures where you have cavities like this. Here also you can make uh, vary the cavity size depending on the choice of your carbon sieves or the zeolites or the polymers. What kind of cage you have? You can have var variety of sizes and hence you can uh, make a very large cavity di diameters. Typically they are on the larger side and it is very difficult to get very small 3D uh, structures. So, uh, depending on the shape of the material, you have some restrictions on the type of uh, size you will get and in 1D structures you can get very large values and in again 3D structures you can get very large values. However, for 2D structures or 2D nanostructures made within the interlamellar spaces of the template you normally get sizes which are of the order of 3 to 50 angstroms. Now, uh, you can also use surfactants as a template. So, far we were discussing zeolites or metal oxides or metal charcogenides, three dimensional structures, uh, two dimensional structures which are uh, like uh, inorganic hard inorganic solids. Uh, whereas, here you can make aggregates of surfactants and these aggregates form from molecules which normally have an organic uh, uh, long tail with a, a some kind of a ion at the head. So, it is these surfactants are made of, of a head group which can be like an ammonium group or any other uh, uh, head group with say tri alkyl group uh, with the nitrogen which may be charged or it can be uncharged moiety uh, and most of the time the head group is polar uh, much more polar than the tail group. 
So, the tail and the head together form a molecule which is called a surfactant and these surfactants can organize themselves to form spherical micelles or they can form cylindrical micelles or they can form two micelles one inside and one outside and then there is a gap in between uh, which goes throughout the sphere and this kind of uh, aggregates of surfactants are called vesicles. So, you can make use of these as templates and synthesize your material within this cylinder or within this uh, sphere or within this what is called a bicontinuous structure. So, depending on the type of surfactant, its concentration and the solvent in which it is present, you can have different kinds of structures and you can then synthesize uh, a new uh, material within these structures. So, the surfactant now acts as a template within which you make your material, but it will be shaped like the template. So, if you use the cylindrical micelle and do the synthesis inside the micelle, then the shape of the product that you will get will also have a shape like a cylinder. So, it will do what is called the templating effect. Now, uh, you can choose a wide variety of surfactants and so there is a lot of choice how to control the diameter of this uh, cylinder, how to control the length of the cylinder, how to control the diameter of this spherical micelle etcetera. So, uh, surfactants uh, are a very rich uh, source of templates if you can make them aggregate the way you want them to aggregate or the way you want your final structure to be because ultimately you have to remove this template and the remaining structure should be the final structure what you want with your material uh, left behind. So, this is an example where you have these uh, uh, surfactant molecules and these surfactant molecules can be organized. So, they are organizing and forming a cylinder. Okay. And this cylinder, uh, you in that cylinder you can synthesize something within this cylindrical uh, space and then you remove the outside cylinder to give you the material that you want in the shape of a cylinder. So, this is the templating effect. So, this is aggregation of the surfactant molecules to form the template which looks like a cylinder. Then you the B step you add or form your desired materials within this, this cylinder after the stage B. And after the stage C, you remove whatever is outside and you are left behind with the material which you have made inside this aggregated surfactant molecular structure. So, this kind of a cylindrical micellar structure ultimately yields a nano wire. If the dimension of this uh, wire, the diameter is in nanometers and most of the time you can get nano wires of 5, 10 nanometers and lengths you can vary from 100 nanometers to few microns very easily. In this step you have to remove the surfactant molecules to get either you use appropriate solvent to remove the surfactants or you can heat this material. So, the surfactant molecules will all go away and you are left with the nano wire. So, this is a template based synthesis using surfactant aggregates to form nano wires. This is another example where you use uh, these kind of surfactant molecules which are also called amphiphilic molecules that means, they have uh, two properties one hydrophobic and hydrophilic both are there in the same molecule there are two parts and here uh, we are discussing the synthesis of gold nanoparticles in micelles and these micelles are made like as we said this, this is a cylindrical micelle made from a surfactant molecules. So, in this case also you have micelles, but of course, in this case these are spherical micelles and these spherical micelles are made up by some kind as you see two structures one thin tail and one solid rod 
and this kind of a polymeric structure is called a block copolymer. So, you have two parts to the polymer. Uh, so, one part of the polymer which itself is a polymer is probably hydrophobic and the other part of the polymer is another polymer made of more hydrophilic nature and the two parts are joined together. So, this is called a block copolymer and when these block copolymers arrange themselves like surfactant molecules at a particular concentration to form a micelle with all the uh, parts of the block copolymer which are alike have come together and those which are different are also uh, close to each other, but away from these structures. So, when you have this organization of a block copolymer uh, to form a micelle, then you add your metal salt from which you want to make your metal. In this case, it is gold particles. So, you have to add gold salt and this gold salt attaches to one part of the polymer which it likes. So, it attaches to say the more polar part of the block copolymer. So, all the uh, dots as you see are attached to the more polar part of the block copolymer and then you can do a reduction or treating the core such that you get the nanoparticle at the center and uh, that is explained more clearly in the next slide where we discuss. So, what we were discussing is an A B di block copolymer uh, which is first used to form a micelle uh, using the surfactant uh, like behavior of aggregation where like form the polar head groups in surfactants come together to form a micelle and the tails are uh, pointing outwards. In this case, the block copolymer has two parts, a poly uh, styrene part and a two vinyl pyridine part. So, the styrene part and two vinyl pyridine have different hydrophobicities and so, uh, one of the parts the two vinyl pyridine which is more polar that forms the head group and uh, arranges close to itself and when you add chlorooric acid which is the starting material to make uh, gold nanoparticles. This chlorooric acid when you add to this solution of block copolymer binds selectively to this vinyl pyridine based uh, poly, uh, polymer uh, and that is uh, the vinyl pyridine part of the polymer is here. And so, that is where the gold nanoparticles will uh, the salt of the gold nanoparticle gets attached and then it is solubilized and then transformed to the metal by reduction. So, when you uh, use a chemical reaction to reduce the uh, gold ions uh, to the metal. So, in this step you finally, end up with the gold particle at the center and the block copolymer around it. So, this is a typical synthesis of using a di block copolymer as a template to make gold nanoparticles. The di block copolymer uh, appears to function like a surfactant does and forms a micelle and the, uh, or, uh, the auric chloride attaches to the head group and then can be reduced to form the gold nanoparticles at the center of the uh, myself. Now, uh, another template that people use uh, quite often are what are called nucleopore uh, membranes, nucleopore filters. Uh, basically, uh, it is a filter uh, made of a plastic or a polymer, usually polycarbonate, and which has got holes on, on it, which are few microns in diameter. So, this is typically a nucleopore membrane and can be used as a nucleopore filter. So, how do you create these holes? You expose the membrane to radiation and that radiation weakens the plastic and then you add uh, certain chemicals or acid which can uh, remove 
or make holes in those specific areas which are weakened by the radiation. So, first you weaken the plastic at certain positions depending on the design which you want, where do you want the uh, holes to be created uh, of micron size or sub micron size. And then once you expose them to radiation in a patterned manner, then you expose them to some chemicals and the weakened part of the plastic or the polymer uh, which is patterned then will get generate these holes which can be used as a nucleopore filter. So, these nucleopore membranes or filter can be used or people have used to synthesize compounds within those pores like polypyrrole, poly 3 methyl thiophene and uh, a nanoporous nucleopore membrane was used. That means, the holes which were made were of the diameter of few uh, nanometers and uh, then this uh, membrane which is basically a polycarbonate which was uh, treated to some uh, uh, rays uh, or radiation uh, and then uh, it was you some acid or ca other chemicals were used to make holes and then that porous nanoporous membrane was used as a template and this had uh, cylindrical pores of the order of 300 angstroms to 10,000 angstroms in diameter, which is 1 micron. So, from uh, some 30 nanometers to 1 micron, that is the diameter of the pores that you can create in these nucleopore membranes and uh, they are uh, linear cylindrical pores, very much like uh, the case that we discussed earlier. Uh, these uh, can be considered linear cylindrical pores and if these diameters, uh, what we see in the nucleopore membranes, these diameter will be around 3, 30 nanometers to about 1 micron, okay. but uh, they were created from one uh, sheet. Uh, in this case, there are different cylinders, but in the nucleopore membrane, there was one full sheet and then uh, holes were made by selectively uh, exposing to radiation at certain spots and then uh, those weak spots were then made into holes by chemical treatment. So, uh, so that is the nucleopore filter uh, which you can start from a polymer membrane like a polycarbonate membrane and uh, where you can get cylindrical pores of the size of 30 nanometers to 1 micron and uh, the monomer solution is separated by the polymerization agent by these membranes. So, before uh, polymerizing you have only the monomer solution and you have this membrane and once you add the polymerizing agent then uh, the uh, nucleopore membranes will be uh, in these pores you will have this polymerization taking place and you will you can make compounds like polypyrrole and poly 3 methyl thiophene has been shown to be made in these uh, porous membranes uh, which are basically made of polycarbonate films with holes drilled in them not by uh, any drilling machine but using uh, 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 some radiation and then uh, chemically uh, treating them uh, to make porous cylindrical type of structures uh, in which by doing reactions with monomers, uh, you can polymerize and get nanostructures, polymeric nanostructures. Now, you can also use uh, biomaterials for templating. So far, we have discussed inorganic materials, organic materials, which are polymeric materials. We can also use biomaterials for templating. In general, we can call them as uh, bio templates. Uh, some of the examples of such bio templates can be uh, uh, for example, a bacterial cell surface uh, protein. So, on the surface of a bacterial cell there are several proteins and these proteins uh, will have some structure which will control the formation of other materials if these are used as templates. You can have a small sized nucleic acid compounds which are of the size of nano and micrometer and they can be 
thought of uh, or they can be used as templates during the formation of other materials. You can have hollow uh, compartmental like structures in viruses and then you can use those viruses as bio templates. So, there are cases where hollow uh, biomolecular compartments in like viruses have been used to synthesize materials within the viruses. So, that is another example of bio templating. Then we can uh, we come across a term which are called which is called S layers. Basically, uh, from single polypeptides, uh, if you can make many copies, multiple copies of a single polypeptide, uh, then it can form spontaneously highly regular nanoporous uh, lattices. So, you have a polypeptide chain and that polypeptide chain uh, uh, spontaneously aggregates to form regular super lattices. That is, uh, lat, uh, there are uh, they are ordered in space over a large uh, dimension, and this can be of various symmetries. So there can be you know rectangular symmetry, hexagonal patterns of these polypeptides which arrange themselves. So one single polypeptide make multiple copies of that, which spontaneously aggregates in some pattern form, and then leaves behind or leaves along with it some nano nanopores uh, like this and then you can do synthesis in these nanopores which are having as the template these polypeptide chains many many numbers of polypeptide chains starting from a single polypeptide. So, uh, in this if you do synthesis then it will be called bio templating because your template is a biomolecule it is a poly, polypeptide chain and hence these are different examples of bio templating. So, typically you make an S layer that means you make a layer made up of this polypeptide chain which organizes itself. So, it forms say a pattern and this pattern is we are showing in one dimension, but it can be like this in two dimensions right and here what we are showing schematically is that these S layer which is organized as a pattern is on a TEM grid because we want to use the TEM and so you make this pattern on the TEM grid. So, once it is on the TEM grid then you coat this S layer with gold. So, suppose you are able to coat this S layers with gold because they are these biomolecules are functionalized and you can have thiol groups and to the thiol groups you can attach gold. So, suppose you can coat gold on these surfaces. So, all the your entire pattern now is covered with gold, but then you want gold in the center you want it to be patterned at the center. So, what you do is you can pass electron beam which is shown here the electron radiation and all the gold from here then enters into the cavities in between the gaps between these two uh, ordered uh, subunits of the polypeptide uh, chain or the S layer. So, you can have gold particles in these gaps which are which have the like kind of melted and reunited to form droplets on being exposed to an electron beam. So, this is an example of bio templating. So, you have a S layer pattern based with single polypeptide chains and you have gold coating on top of them. Then you irradiate with electron and all these gold forms droplets and they are arranged regularly because this spacing is fixed. And so, you can have now a regular pattern of gold nanoparticles. Uh, made using a bio uh, templated route. Then you can use magnetotactic bacteria as a bio template. What is this magnetotactic bacteria? These are bacteria which are, which are found mainly in the sea and the word magnetotactic tells you that they have some magnetic property associated with them. So, these are in biology this is a group of pro prokaryotes and they are specially interesting 
since they orient and migrate along with the magnetic earth's magnetic fields which is called the geomagnetic field lines. So, that means the bacteria can find out where is the earth's uh, north pole and the earth's south pole. So, the magnetic lines of force of the earth uh, the bacteria can find out. So, how can it find out that is because it has got some magnetic particles inside the body. So, this uh, migration of these bacteria based on the earth's uh, geomagnetism uh, is related to the magnetic structure or the magnetosomes inside these bacteria. And these magnetosomes are nothing but ferric oxide Fe 3 O 4 particles which are also called magnetite particles which are bound inside the membrane of these cells okay? and these are called magnetosomes. So, to explain to you what is a magnetosome or how this happens is if you consider this to be a cell. So, there is an outer membrane of the cell and there is a cytoplasmic membrane inside you have the cytoplasm. So, it is known that inside the cytoplasm there are these uh, magnetosomes. So, these are these magnetosomes and the inside the magnetosome you have this Fe 3 O 4 which is magnetic in nature it will be attracted or interact with magnetic field and this kind of particles are present within the cell of the bacteria of the magnetotactic bacteria and that helps it to guide to move the bacteria based on the magnetic field of the earth. Now, this F E 3 O 4 particle is covered with the membrane which is called the magnetosome membrane. So, here what we show is how does this F E 3 O 4 form inside the cell. So, uh, what is known today is that the, the F E 3 plus ions from outside the cell. So, it is in the solution which is outside and can come in through this cell membrane and form Fe2 plus, but it is the exact mechanism is not known how Fe3 plus comes within the cell wall. From Fe2 plus within the cell it enters this magnetosome. So, we have pictured the magnetosome like this where once it comes inside you get ferric oxide which is hydrated. So, all this iron is Fe 3 plus right and here Fe 2 plus is there. So, they together Fe 3 plus and Fe 2 plus give you Fe 3 O 4. So, ultimately you get a particle which has got Fe 3 O 4 inside outside there is a membrane and the whole thing is called a magnetosome. And so, this magnetosome with Fe 3 O 4 inside the cell many many of these are there and they control the movement of the bacteria in the presence of a magnetic field and how uh, the uh, formation exact formation how does the ions move in, uh, inside are still certain questions, but lot of it depends on the pH and other redox behavior uh, in this magnetotactic bacteria. This is a, a real TM pictures of this bacteria. So, you can see these particles magnetosomes with the magnetic particles they align themselves uh, in a some particular direction inside the cell and this direction is guided by the earth's magnetic fields. So, you can find many different types of shapes of these magnetosomes they can be little bit hexagonal like here or they can be uh, like cuboids. Uh, and the most important thing is most of the time they will be aligned in a certain manner and this alignment is important for the bacteria to navigate in the sea uh, based on the earth's magnetic field. So, uh, this is an example of uh, bio templates where the cell is the template the magnetosome is the template inside which the bacteria is uh, for forming inorganic materials Fe 3 O 4 is an inorganic material which the formation of that is guided by the structure of the magnetosomes. Now, uh, next 
uh, after this we will come to the next lecture uh, which is on template methods again part 2 with which we will continue in our next lecture which will be the lecture 8 of module 2. So, thank you. Thank you.